First thing I wanted to uh, explain on how I get the uh, bridge call to glue the bridge. I use this uh, little call Gondi base side treble side. This is a 68 Gondi style. And what I do is I place the call inside like this right where it's supposed to go and butt it up against this brace so I know exactly where the call is going to be placed. So this but it again against some any any type of brace from the harmonic bar here that uh, butts up against the call will pretty much and then what I do is I go inside take the call right here and then tape the call over here so essentially when I use, uh, let's see, when I use any type of clamp going through the sound hole here in the call, it will pu it'll push the call this way, you know, but it'll be braced with some type of little stopper to where I don't have to glue something inside or actually I don't have to use pins you know, uh, driven from the bridge to the inside of the call to hold everything in place. I can just do it like this with a little tape. Okay. This uh, is done after the guitar is together and playing. You know, before it's played, excuse me. So this right here comes off and it's not used, this isn't used really until after the guitar is already put together and I go to glue the bridge on the first time. So this goes on the side for a while. Okay, I'd like to explain the glue space, but I can use a little more cedar than the spruce. Okay, these two stiffeners right here. I cross over the line with one stiffener to sort of hold the line together but there is a scallop going this way but you'll notice this right here goes across that line up and down the vertical so it supports the line as well. In other words um, if, the, if the stiffeners were just glued to the line that leaves the line open to possible damage or opening up later. This way, it supports it going across the line this way. And you have your scallop. Okay, these braces here are almost half the height of, let's say, these braces on the fan, on the fan struts. So I'd like to explain what I'm doing with the fan struts right now. What I'm doing with the base side is again I'm using this rounded piece and I'm rounding the, the heads rather than pyramiding. Okay, uh, it's going thinner toward the sound hole on the base end. The reason for that is is that by going a little thinner toward the sound hole this will actually drop the bass end of the sound off into the guitar a little more give it a little uh, what uh, is determining a lower bass or maybe uh, a more full bass but it keeps it here with a little higher st structure it keeps it here to be a little stiffer sounding. So you'll get a stiff but lower bass going toward the sound hole. The fifth, this controls the fifth string. This is a little higher, a little higher because I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is I'm going 
uh, first of all, equal height between here and here, but just a little higher strut. Now this softens the effect of the fifth string a little bit to where it won't be so gangoso. This strut controls mainly the fourth string. These two struts control the fourth string uh, to some degree. So I'm going the same height from here all the way down to here but a little thinner than this uh, strut that controls the fifth string. This opens up the sound a little more as well as this one but controlled these three struts here the same height or not the same height but actually these two of the same height the fourth string uh, to some degree so I'm going the same height from here all the way down to here but a little thinner than this uh, strut that controls the fifth string. This opens up the sound a little more as well as this one but controlled these three struts here the same height or not the same height but actually these two of the same height open up the sound of the of the bass or, or just the general character of the guitar it opens it up just a little bit more. This controls the fifth string to be a little softer effect, not so, not so loud. The higher the strut, the lower the volume, generally. The, the lower the strut here, generally the more open and a little higher volume or a little bit higher frequency right in here. Okay, this, now remember these struts here are the same height from top to bottom. This is a little higher, but the same height from top to bottom. This is higher here, but lower to bring out more bass, but keep it stiff, like a good flamenco guitar. Not boomy, but just a real stiff, but lower or more deep bass. Going over here, this controls the third string. The third string normally uh, is strident in some guitars, but what we do to control that is we drop the third string off into the box tone-wise by having it stiff here a little higher and then going down pretty drastically going down and then shortening, making a, a longer scallop and shortening also right there. And this causes the third string to drop off into the box a little bit and blend better with the second and first string. Second string, we have it dropping off a little bit. Uh, uh, this is uh, a little lower here and a little higher here. Same as the third, but not quite as, as low as the third. All right. This enables the second string to drop off a little bit and cause more snap. Not so, not so much bouncing up and down, but snap, you know, side to, you know, side to side like that. This causes a good, uh, a stiff action, but not so much bounce like a classical guitar. All right, the first, first string here is I'll uh, between this and. And this uh, sixth string, I tapered, I give it a little bit longer scallop, and then I start here thin, and then go up a little higher here at the, near the sound hole. This is to cause uh, a little snap in the first string by having a little longer uh, scallop right here, and it causes a little higher frequency to get some singing sensation in the uh, first string. Now the singing sensation is important to most guitars, classical and flamenco. Uh, it doesn't mean that guitars need to have a long sustain, but this guitar itself, uh, you know, the uh, let's, let's go back to the 2003 Reyes model. That model has long sustain. It, it You can uh, do about 22, 24 counts of soliatis before the sustain completely dies out in the bass, especially. 
but the decay of the notes, although not instantaneous, is usually very quick. It's just that the sustain is there. You know, it, it's just that there is a lingering sensation of dimensional sound that comes out of it, which I like very much. So, this is... Uh, this is characteristically the way I'm going to adjust this pattern, although I'll keep the Condi, keep the Condi pattern uh, the same design, I'm changing the struts just a little bit. The Condi stiffeners here are normally about half the height of these. So this is where we're staying with this here as stiffener. But with these, this is where I'm making modifications. And this is something that's very important to this tutorial to find out if it's really going to work or not. I'm staying on the harmonic bar here. I'm staying pretty much the same as the old Condi pattern. And this essentially this is essentially the same as the uh, 68 Condi style and also here um I don't know where it is yeah, here it is this will go up here at about the same size you know and I'll cut it down after I, I glue it across they're going in and I'm gluing them totally flat across the harmonic bars will go from one end to the other completely flat so the top will be completely flat and I'll round the top behind the bridge, I will round the top right around to this point of having it a little higher here on the sides and then tapering the sides about maybe oh maybe just a little more than a, a millimeter uh, around to this point here and then just sort of averaging out the rest of the guitar in kind of a flat mode you know from here to here and then this will taper up to about maybe a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a millimeter or so, right here at the top. But from the sound hole to the bottom edge of the top, it'll be completely flat. Then, when I get ready to use a bridge on the top, the top will have just a little bombado, just a little roundness. And what that will do is, although the top is flat in front of the bridge, the bridge itself will pull the top just sl very very slight you know to give it a little slight dome here in the bridge but everything else characteristically is completely free of any dome you know from the the top to the bottom is totally straight so the natural age of the guitar with a little bombado on the bridge will actually pull the top round behind the bridge area just a little bit and this is perfectly uh, uh, it's perfectly uh, normal for a good flamenco guitar to be this way you know flat in front of the bridge and a little bump you know a little roundness here behind the bridge okay that's it for now